I've wanted to test out my soil for such a long time, so I've brought soil expert Mark Highland here to take me through the process of testing my soil. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, absolutely. So, what do you think so far? You know, I, I, like, I like what I see. You know, it looks lush, lots of organic matter. The plants look great. You know, they're obviously growing fast, nice and green. Awesome. All right, let's take a scoop. Take a scoop of this soil in here. Is there sort of a proper way? Should we be testing the top layer, middle? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna dig in. Uh, we're gonna start by moving all the mulch aside. Since you have the cocoa shell mulch in your okay. garden, we're gonna move all that aside and you wanna get just the soil. So yeah, I just clear away all that mulch and I kind of, I would go so far as to really make sure that it's uh, There's you know, no... just soil. Okay. That's it, that's it, yep. So we'll get all that cocoa shell mulch out of the way. So get a little bit of this soil out for the test. All right. Um, ooh. So you only need a small handful for the type of test we're going to do here. So I'd say maybe a little bit more. And you know, we're, and you were asking me about the depth. You know, mm -hmm. and the depth that we're taking it at is great because you know these veggies are basically kind of shallow rooted. So we're taking it from the region where everything will be rooting. So we got basically four inches down here. What, mm, what are kind of some of the tests that you can do, the site tests, to see if you have good soil? Well, this whole you know, visual inspection is definitely justifiable and that's, a, that's your number one. You know, because what you can see with your eyes and feel with your tools, that definitely is gonna tell you, you know, am I gonna have to use a pickaxe in this garden or is it fluffy, like this stuff? And you can just slide a tool right into it. So first is visual, um, you know, you can feel a soil with your hands, since we're gonna use this for the soil test, I'll get from here, but you know, you can try to uh, squeeze it, and then in your hand, if it falls back up as you barely touch it, if it falls apart like this, that's a sign of really good soil. Because poorer soils would stick together, it would still look like a little uh, ball in your hand, uh, especially if it was high in clay. And this is very loamy, it falls back apart easily, you can see the organic matter in the soil, that's a good thing. You know, really good soil, you're gonna see organic matter in it. Good soil is gonna be a dark color, it's chocolatey brown, you know, a lot of people say the mixture of chocolate cake, you know, and, and you know, if you look at this, that's pretty much what you have here, Patty, you pretty much have chocolate cake. It breaks apart nice and easily. And another good sign of good soil, I just took a little handful. So if I let it fall apart, mm -hmm we still have chunks. That's a really good sign. That means that you have the organic microflora that's making all the little compounds that's gonna bind this soil together, make macrophores, micropores, hold more moisture. So, you know, loam is what you're shooting for in a garden, in a veggie garden especially. So that's what you have right here. Um, so that's the kind of hand inspection. And then you can do a couple simple chemical tests pH is a big one. Uh, you know, we all know we got lime soils occasionally, and pH tells you when you need to do that. So pH affects nutrient release in soils. All right, so we've got our soil here that we're going to test. So we need some water. How much water should we add to this? So we got the one cup of soil, and you know that's uh, probably three. Well, I'd say probably two cups of water. So. You could probably even put one more cup in there. So we have a little three to one ratio going on. Three parts water, one part soil. Perfect. These little test kits are really handy just because they are so easy to use. This is definitely something that I'm gonna do with my daughter because she loves doing little Perfect. scientific experiments. And <laughs> this seems like one that is good to do with kids. You're gonna open it up almost okay. and uh, kind of put the powder in. So it should twist slightly, and then you're gonna get the powder in there. Always fun, just like opening a bag of chips, right? You don't want it to go everywhere. Right. You want it to go in the test kit. But oh, here we go. Perfect. And don't worry if you spill a little, it's fine. There'll be plenty of uh, reagent to make it happen. Mix the powder with the water, get some color change. So you just put the lid on and uh, shake it. All right. Do some nitrogen phosphorus and potassium testing, the N, the P, and the K, which shows up on fertilizer a lot. Perfect. I don't know, what do you think? On the you, green side? Yeah, it's definitely on the green side. It might be, say, slightly acidic. Check that out, because it's not fully dark, dark green. Definitely gonna say slightly acid, and there's really not any orange to it. Um, 
you know, even looking at it from the side where I'm not seeing any of these other colors, it's definitely a lighter green. I'm going to say that you are slightly acid to neutral because it's got more green in it as opposed to orange. Next one. Oh, this one's that definitely one done changed something. color. Oh, yeah. Is, is it it's deficient? Deficient, it would be um, very, very light still. Okay. So like yeah. down here where uh, it's depleted, it would be very, very light in color. You know, the surplus is a very dark orange. So it and might even be sufficient, actually. We have a pretty good orange color. It's on the darker side. So yeah, probably right in between K3 and K4. It's definitely at least as dark as that K3, don't you think? Right, and that means we have sufficient <laughs> potassium. All right, so we're going to say nitrogen adequate to sufficient. Which is awesome for this time Yay. of year. You don't want too much because then it's going to leach into the groundwater and we don't want that, so. Sufficient to surplus, absolutely. So what does that mean if I have a surplus of phosphorus? If you have a surplus, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's bad. Okay. Um, the phosphorus particles are going to be held onto uh, little bits of compost, little bits of organic matter. So they're available in the soil, but that's good. You want the phosphorus for anything fruiting. So we're really looking to make sure that we have enough phosphorus in there so to see if it's depleted. That's it. Right. That's what we're really looking at. So if it does say it's a surplus, it's not anything that we have to do something about. Nope. No, because okay. the plants will take it up the next season. Awesome. Because it's not going to go anywhere because it's not a negative charged particle which can go through the soil real easy. It's a positive charged, so it's held in the soil. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope that you've learned something about soil, soil testing, and are going to implement some of the things we talked about in this little mini episode. I'm Patty Moreno, the Garden Girl. Thanks for watching.